would like to tell you what I learned from my life in science, and that is a history, and, uh, or ancient history, if you wish. But I think there is a good reason to talk about uh, my history in science, because uh, young people, and, and this is intended really for young students, uh, may learn something uh, from my, my uh, life in science. And in this slide, I listed my, the lessons from my life in science. And I labeled it thus far, because I'm not done as yet. Uh, I may have more, some more lessons as I go on, but thus far. So uh, lesson number one is uh, how important are good mentors? Uh, you cannot learn uh, good, to do good science just from reading articles or books. Of course, you have to read articles, you have to read books, but you learn how to approach science from people, from mentors. And I, had, uh, I was very fortunate to have great mentors in my uh, early life in science. Uh, my first mentor uh, was Jacob Mager, uh, Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Uh, he was a great biochemist. He was also a very rigorous experimentalist. Every experiment had to be done with all the controls. Uh, every result had to be verified from all aspects. So I owe a lot to Jacob Mager uh, for a strong background of rigorous biochemistry. After I, I, I did my, uh, my, after I finished my PhD, I went on to do my postdoctoral training with Gordon Tompkins uh, from the University of California in San Francisco. And Gordon was quite different from Marger. He did not care too much about controls, but he had a lot of inspiration, imagination. He, he was bursting uh, with new ideas. Now, I was very fortunate to have this combination of, of Mager and Tompkins uh, as my, my uh, early mentors in science, because in science it is important to have imagination, but it's also important then to not to be carried away uh, with your imagination and to check rigorously whether your ideas are indeed correct. So this combination of these two mentors had a great impact in my f uh, further life in science. Now, uh, my second next lesson here is not to go with the mainstream uh, and try to find an object which is important, but it, which is not yet interesting to others. So when I, was, uh, when I came as a postdoctoral fellow to the laboratory of Gordon Tompkins, he worked mainly on how steroid uh, hormones caused increased synthesis of enzymes using a certain enzyme. And when I got there, I saw it was a big lab with 20 postdocs, more than 20 postdocs, working on different aspects of the synthesis of this protein. So I saw this was too crowded, and I uh, asked for something else, and I got interested in the degradation of the same enzyme. Now, uh, protein degradation was not uh, very much uh, of point of interest at that time, but I saw that uh, degradation of proteins are also important uh, uh, as a way of to regulate uh, levels of proteins in cells. So that's how I got uh, my, my subject. But make sure that you, you are uh, uh, working on a biologically important subject, otherwise there is no point uh, to do this research. And then the, the third, uh, number three, uh, observation or, or lesson that uh, I learned is that accidental observations may be the most important observations. And uh, sometimes when you make an accidental and unexpected observation, uh, grab it if you think it's important. You don't have to go after all the unexpected observations, but after uh, the important ones. And my, uh, my unexpected <laughs> result is an experiment that, that uh, I did when I, uh, one of the first experiments that I did when I was a, a postdoctoral fellow, I uh, looked there at the degradation of this enzyme that was studied in the laboratory, uh, tyrosine aminotransferase, and uh, you can see that it is degraded quite fast, uh, half lifetime of about two to three hours, so half of it was degraded within two to three hours, that is the control. And then I added 
standards. I tested the effect of different compounds. I saw that it would be degraded even faster when I add to it some poisons, such as potassium fluoride, a poison of energy uh, production. And actually, what I got was just the opposite. As you can see, potassium fluoride completely stopped uh, the degradation of the enzyme whenever it was added. It, it stopped it uh, completely. And um, so yeah, the result was just the opposite of what I thought it would be. But then I began to think, and I was very much impressed by it, because it actually showed that you need energy to degrade uh, protein in cells. Uh, and that turned out to be uh, general. Uh, you need energy for, to degrade uh, all proteins in cells. And that is very different from the degradation of proteins outside in the cells. Uh, for example, in a digestive system, when proteins are digested, actually you release energy. So I thought, why would you need energy? And thermodynamically, actually, it made sense because you, make, you need energy to make order, to, for selectivity. And protein degradation was known to be selective. Some proteins were degraded very fast, some were degraded very slow. For, for selectivity, you need energy. But what is the mechanism? There must be some kind of a new mechanism in which an energy-dependent step uh, is involved uh, in protein degradation. Uh, so uh, I was so much impressed by this uh, experiment that I continued to work on it uh, for many years until we found how, why, why is energy needed uh, and how, how our proteins are degraded in cells and why is energy needed for protein degradation. And uh, that is my next lesson. Uh, use whatever experimental is, uh, approach is needed for your objective. It may not be necessary the most fashionable or so-called state-of-art uh, technology. So I used biochemistry because I thought that we need biochemistry uh, to dissect uh, a completely unknown system. And as I went along, uh, uh, that was in the early 80s, the powerful methodologies of molecular biology came into general use. But I saw that in order to find out how a completely novel system works, you cannot use uh, yet techniques of ge molecular genetics. You can use that when you have some idea uh, about, about the, uh, uh, the players or the enzymes or the proteins involved in that process. So I used old-fashioned biochemistry, if you wish, at the times of modern molecular biology, but I thought that was uh, the way to go. So use whatever is necessary to get your objective, and uh, don't, don't go only after the, the current fashions. So using uh, 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 biochemistry, uh, we uh, isolated uh, in 77, 78, this was some of the stages of the research, a small protein, uh, ubiquitin, which we found to be in a cell-free system to be required uh, for energy-dependent protein degradation. And by we, I mean uh, people in my lab at the Technion, including Aaron Tehanover, who was then my, my graduate student. And what this small protein is doing was found out uh, two years later, 79, 78, when we discovered that this ubiquitin becomes linked uh, to proteins uh, uh, that are destined for degradation. And we propose that the linkage, this linkage takes proteins for degradation. And again, here by we, I mean people in my lab at Technion, including Aaron Chekhanover, and in collaboration with Ernie Rose, uh, in whom, uh, whose laboratory in Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia I spent a sabbatical year and returned there for many summers afterwards. Now, Ernie Rose uh, was the third person uh, who had uh, an impact, uh, in, in significant impact on my life in science. He's very different from me. He's, he likes problem solving. He's very analytical. And I am more intuitive. So kind, we kind of uh, uh, complemented each other in that, uh, that important combination of intuition and analytics. He's also very sharply critical, so he criticized me many times when it was needed, when I got carried away in spite of my rigorous training uh, with uh, uh, Mager. So Ernie Rose had an important uh, role in the discovery uh, of ubiquitin-mediated protein degradation. The upper part of this slide uh, uh, shows the original marking hypothesis that we uh, uh, made in, in 1980. I won't go into the, the details, 
but it, what we found, what we proposed was uh, that proteins are marked for degradation by their linkage to ubiquitin, and that linkage uh, requires ATP or energy, and that ex actually explained our original observation uh, that uh, why uh, that energy is needed for protein degradation. It is needed for the tagging, mainly for the tagging reaction of the linkage of ubiquitin or APF1 uh, to proteins. So uh, this, this uh, elucidation of the basic biochemistry had a, a, an important uh, role uh, to find out by others uh, in what, in what, what are uh, the physiological uh, uh, roles of this system, and some are uh, listed here. It is very important in the, uh, the control of cell division, I am, and I am working on this personally in the past almost 20 years, certain types of signal transduction, and so on. I won't go into, into all of them, but uh, I always believe that protein degradation is important, but I have to be frank and to say I was surprised how many, how much uh, so the destruction protein, a destructive process is used in biological regulation. And because uh, protein degradation is involved in so many, uh, pro uh, so many uh, processes, it's not uh, surprising that the ubiquitin system has, is also involved in many uh, diseases, uh, many types of cancer, neurodegeneration, and other diseases. And uh, there are uh, even some new drugs on, on, uh, that are being used based on, the, on, on these basic the discoveries. There is a protosome inhibitor called Velcade, which is quite uh, effective for the treatment of an awful disease, uh, multiple myeloma, a bone marrow cancer. And because my, my original background is for medicine, it is very personally very gratifying to me uh, that our basic research now can actually help uh, sick people. So, um, continuing with my lessons is when I look back uh, on my life in science, I, I realized how much fun I had. I had a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. And I think that this is the way uh, to, to make discoveries. In science, we have fun and we have chores. We have, we have um, to produce papers in order to, uh, to find jobs, to get promoted, to get grants. But we should not just, we should not let our chores become the main thing in our life in science. The main thing is, is excitement. If you are excited, if you are having a lot of fun, that's how you will make a discovery. So don't forget, don't let the chores overcome your excitement. And then uh, another uh, uh, lesson, or maybe my last lesson, is never to reach, bank, not, never to leave bench work. Some people, when they get more senior, uh, leave bench work, and I am not. I uh, always do a, a, a like experiments. I always, almost do it on a daily basis, and I am having, continuing to have a lot of fun. When, I, when you do experiments with your own hands, instead of just telling somebody to do it, uh, there is a lot of uh, involvement. You are, you are personally involved. You are very excited when you when you want to see the results. And when you see results that are unexpected, you get even more excited and you try to find out why is that until you find the right answer. So uh, continue to use bench work and you will have a lot of excitement and fun. Of course, you cannot do all the work by yourself. You need the help of dedicated uh, uh, people, uh, students, postdocs. And I was very fortunate to have many and some of them uh, are mentioned here, I go, can go through all of them, uh, but these are some people in, the, in my lab at the Technion. I had uh, close to 30 graduate students, including Aron Chachanover, who shared the Nobel Prize with me. And uh, I would like, again, to mention the important uh, contribution of Ernie Rose. And uh, in the last, I would like to show the, some of the people who uh, uh, either participated or witnessed this discovery. This picture was taken uh, in the, at the end of the summer of 1979, when we made the breakthrough together with Ernie Rose at Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia. In the center, you can see Ernie Rose, and I am sitting down there. Uh, Aaron Chekhanover is standing next to me, next to me. So we were all much younger at that time. 